This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Starbucks Triple Shot. What gives you energy? Find your Starbucks Triple Shot energy online or at your local store. Give it a shot. Welcome to the Lady Gang. You're about to listen to our podcast, but there is so much more our community has to offer. Follow us at the Lady Gang, join our secret Facebook group, shop our clothing line, books, and find out when we're going to be in your city at theladygang.com. We're so excited you're here. Enjoy the show. Well, what is this? Welcome to the Lady Gang. That's amazing. Say that again. The Lady Gang. Things are about to change around here. Each week, we catch up with Hollywood's hottest girl posse, Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to your wonderful week. We're Guys. so excited to have you here. And we are officially cool this week <laughs> i'm so excited about our guests me too i mean one half of our guests is wonderful and we all love him very much but the second half of our guests i'm super like a little bit of a super fan of and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell her while we're doing the interview because i don't want to make her uncomfortable but it's exciting did yeah. you know that i actually used to send heim clothes back in the day jack vanna clothes yep did they ever wear them yep like all the time. I just don't know. It was more her sister that I sent him to, but I don't, I wouldn't think that she remembered me, but that's my little fun fact. Do you think that if we played their song, they would sue us? Like probably. on the podcast? <laughs> their record label probably would. Yeah. <laughs> They're really successful. Um, Very. You know? Yeah. They're no it's joke. A, it's a big deal. I feel like, you know... Normally we're just a bunch of losers on this podcast and I feel like I just got cool. You know what I yeah, mean? True. Like I might wear all black and like just do my brows only. Mm, like, so chic. Cool. Well, I feel like so that chic. might look strange. <laughs> well, let's get into it. It's time for Good Week. Yes, it is. Bad Week. Oh no. Who wants to go first? I'll go. Okay. My good week is, you know how I talk about all the time that I cheat on Jared in my dreams? Yes. So I found out that Jared cheats on you. He cheats on me in his dreams with who as well. I'll kill her. So he says that his cheating dreams are usually like me bringing another friend or like a gal into the dream, and then he's mm. gonna like go off with that other person. But then he gets too excited, like about the possibility that he always like wakes himself up before <laughs> the cheating actually happens. No. <laughs> so like wow. it's the right jared yeah you Thanks. guys are really sexual in your dreams i can't remember the last sex dream i had really no i'm oh. in an asexual period of my life dreams <laughs> not dreams i only have sex Rough. dreams when i'm working with straight dudes mm. oh about them yeah and not always about it? them mm. but i think it's because like we're never around Straight guys, straight really. dudes that aren't our husbands. Yeah, you need like a shitty piece of shit douchebag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you, it's the boys. Like I, yeah. I used to have so many sex dreams about this guy that I did Rock of Ages with because you oh. just... Was it Constantine? Dirtbag. No. Oh <laughs> Not a dirtbag. Like this guy wasn't a dirtbag. Like he was, he was lovely, but he just was like so hot. Yeah. And he'd slept with like thousands of women. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, give me a piece of that. <laughs> and I had it in my dreams a lot. So you're, yeah, your subconscious. It just like lets you experience. Okay. So that was my good week. My bad week is so um, somebody got on my Amazon account and my Walmart account. There's like been a lot of things happening in the fraud world in my life. Mm -hmm. So I had to go and like dispute some of these charges on my credit card or on the account. So I was on customer service with Amazon and he's like going through all these charges and I'm like saying like, yes or no. And then finally he gets to the last <gasps> one and he was like, he's like, um, a multi-pack of gas X extra strength. Was that you or not? No. And I was like, there was, <laughs> yes, sir. That was me. <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. I am a gas. It's almost less embarrassing if it's like, did you buy a 19 inch dildo? And you're like, I sure did. But yeah, like, it's like, I am very gassy. Thank you so much for letting me know that last me one month. work. Yes. Like immediately. 
That can't be good for you. Okay. I know. I actually, I do take it a lot. So somebody yeah. that's a doctor that's listening. I don't think any doctors are listening, but if any are, <laughs> let me know if not. I should not be taking gas X so often. Anyways, mm. bad week. Oof. Okay. Um, I'll go. Uh, my bad week is that I am really embarrassed about some habits that I have. And mm. I just thought about it when Zach's out of town. Um, I don't go to the grocery store. I'm, I don't go out of my way to order food in. I do this thing where I just like make it work. Whatever is in the house, like what the f- ever is in the freezer, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. fridge, the pantry, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's never a lot to choose from. Sometimes I have daily harvest. Sometimes I don't because I'm already, eat- I've already eaten all of it. Sometimes you get a block of cheese and yeah. cut the mold mm-hmm. off. I mean, mm-hmm. we all do it. Delicious. Okay, good. This makes me feel better. So I was like eating dinner, quote in quotes, dinner last mm-hmm. night. And I'm like, this is so gross. I don't, Zach would never dare feed himself like this. Mm. Like he would be so horrified to see what I made myself for dinner. It was like a tortilla wrap Mm -hmm. with a quarter of an avocado because it was the only part of the avocado that wasn't brown. Wasn't brown, Mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Sir Kensington special sauce that like Mm -hmm. orangey, like mayo, whatever, Mm -hmm. and some pickles. And I wrapped it in this tortilla <laughs> and chowed down. Sounds good. It was pretty delicious, but I was just so grossed out. I was like, I'm a college kid. This is just grow up, go order something or get something delivered. Like, is that so hard? Post but it nice. is. <laughs> like, I hate feeding myself. Anyways, so that that was my bad week. I was like, I'm a disgusting pig. My good week is delayed because I forgot to talk about this in the last couple episodes. There was a big announcement made in Housewives history. What? Heather Dubrow. Oh my God. Yep. Going back to the Housewives of Orange County. Mm -hmm. And I am stoked. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wait. Was she always Orange County? I thought she was Beverly Hills. Always Orange County. Oh. She said she'd never go back. And here she is. And I can't wait to see her and be like, you said never, never say never. Mm. she's in back and i am gonna see if maybe we could have lunch while she's filming oh my <laughs> god you want to get a little cameo on the show this is it i just this so is your badly, man i so badly wanted but they it. needed it like they're doing a restructure of oc and they needed it they did they got who's rid even, of who's Bronwyn. on it mm-hmm. well the only person that i think is still still going to be there is shannon i think it's going to be shannon heather and then maybe some new people because bronwyn's not going back elizabeth's not going back i'm available i mean but you don't live in orange county sh- I, I could live in orange county for a job opportunity like this <laughs> <laughs> i actually i would love would kelty kill no to see kelty on a she housewives would suck so bad at housewives she I'm, can't get in the dirt. She cannot get in the mud. She's so bad when there's drama. Yeah, that's true. Like you can't by be somebody bad, that just... By bad, you mean awesome because I just listen and I think of a solution. No, like it's bad for TV. People. It's yeah, bad. bad for TV. God. Yeah, I could get in there and really stir some shit up. You could yeah. fucking pee in a purse, bitch. I mean, I feel like that's like your your end goal needs to be a housewife at some point. I feel like it's built for you. I have something controversial to say about the housewives of Beverly Hills, too. What? We have time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they kind of are starting to look like clowns. The way that they're like dressing up and doing glam and wearing like full head to toe, like louis vuitton or head to toe Mm -hmm. gucci like i I get it do you i'm not gonna like bash them but i'm sort well i did i just did i said they look like clowns it's not a bash but it's just i know what you mean it's it's, everything is like a costume too many looks because it used to be just the confessional looks and then you went to the dinner and you were normal person right now it's like costume all the time and i'm like you know what lisa i enjoy a fucking palm print unitard mm-hmm. in your confessional mm-hmm. i don't need it at vons well yeah. and yeah when they're like doing their own hair and makeup i think sometimes too and they're still wearing these like matching bright no pink one on Beverly doing that. but they're all getting glam they're all, they're all having, getting glam that nobody's getting their own hair it. these days and there's a new housewife on beverly hills who i really like and she actually made a joke about how like her older friends, because she's around our age, and then these women are 40s, 50s. She's like, yeah, some of my older friends in Beverly Hills 
they dress up and it's a little over the top and it kind of ages them. Or like she said something <gasps> along the lines shady of that. Singer. Mm-hmm. It was a little shady, but I just, I'm sort of kind like, it's, it's kind of a bummer. They're all like competing to be it's Erica like, Jane. Yeah, yeah. They're all trying to be Erica Jane season, Erica's first season. And it's mm-hmm. not, not great. No. All right. I'll tell you what else is not great. Bad week. So as you know, I'm a big fan of the home edit and I'm a big fan of taking things out of the boxes they came in and putting them in other boxes and clear boxes that I paid $20 for and then cricketed. So over the last few weeks, I've completely redone my pantry. It's gorgeous. And I finally went to use one of my pantry items. It was quinoa. And well, I have such sexy mature problems this season of Lady Gang. I bet I know what you did. What? You threw away the box that tells you how to prepare the quinoa. No, come on. That's like, I do that every time. This is real. <laughs> I opened the quinoa. I was about to pour it into my rice maker and what? It's infested with bugs. Ew. So gross. my pantry is not secure. The uh, little vacuum top seals, not secure. Bug got in there, reproduced more bugs than quinoa. Oh. Now my friend, more bugs said, than quinoa. my friend said that the bug probably came in the quinoa mm-hmm. and it's been there the whole time. And, and then a live just, bug, a live bug came in the quinoa from the quinoa factory and then multiplied either way is disgusting. Probably will never eat quinoa again. Okay. At least you like didn't skim through the process of making it because you could have really cooked that bug right in t- and all of its little babies right into your quinoa and not noticed. And you wouldn't notice because quinoa is a multifaceted grain. Yeah. Has so many you colors. Know, has a lot of colors, a lot of textures. Okay. Here's my good week. And I think this is a great way to lead into our episode, especially because it's a special episode. Someone... uh I read, was reading, I don't know where I found it, but I found this line, choose your hard. And it really spoke to me because it's like, I was feeling overwhelmed and I was like, everything is hard. Everything is hard. And then I was like, but is it that hard? Like I've chosen these roads of hard in my life. I've chosen to go to therapy and deal with some like shit. I've chosen to renovate my house, a hell of my own making. Like I've chosen my hard, but it's not the same hard that I had when I was like cocktail waitressing till four in the morning and, you know, couldn't afford rent or the hard of like doing rockets and being like, literally my vertebrae is breaking. Like I have a broken foot and I'm just going to keep kicking. Like, you know, you have to choose your hard. And I just liked that saying, because it wasn't like that thing of like, one day you'll get to a place where everything will be perfect. Everything will be seamless. Everything will be easy. That's impossible, but you choose your heart. And I think sometimes like, I was just thinking like lady gang and life and all of it is hard, but like, I like this heart and I was, ha- I'm happy to choose this heart because it brings me a lot of joy. And that's what I wanted to say my good week. Oh, that was cool. Nice. See you guys soon. <laughs> Hello, Lady Gang. This week's theme for divulging all your secrets and coming into the Lady Confessional is celebrities. I'm sure I have a few million of these secrets. You might even see some in the upcoming book. Have you hooked up with a celebrity? Have you ever seen a celebrity behaving badly? Have you been working for a celebrity and you're ready to dish and tell us all the bad things about said celebrity? I hope so. Those are my favorite secrets. So do us a favor and write them into theladysecrets.com and it's completely anonymous. We can't trace you don't you worry your boss will never know if that boss is a nasty celebrity and you can also call it in to 1-844-SEXY-LADY our hotline 1-844-SEXY-LADY S-X-Y LADY we're so excited that our sponsor is Starbucks. Everyone loves Starbucks. And we're so excited about the Starbucks Triple Shot Energy Extra Strength Coffee Beverage in a Can. I spent the last weekend tending to a friend who is in the hospital. And oh my gosh, getting up early in the morning, getting in the car. I didn't have time to stop at Starbucks. I just had the Starbucks Triple Shot Energy in a can ready to go. Drank it while I was driving. It's so easy. It's the Starbucks coffee that you love ready to drink. And it's offered in classic flavors and now in sugar free. You can have vanilla, dark roast, cafe mocha, or my favorite, caramel. There's two zero sugar flavors, black and vanilla. They're also dairy-free, which is so important to you. So what gives you energy? Find your Starbucks triple shot energy online or at your local store. And we want to thank Starbucks again for making this program possible and making the Starbucks triple shot energy in a can. It is delicious and it's extra strength. Thank you, Starbucks.
Okay, ladies, can't remember the last time that you wanted sex? Oh, I'm sorry, you've got kids in the car? I know, we're going to call it ice cream. Listen, ice cream, you scream, but maybe not for sex. I mean ice cream, sorry. So if your desire for ice cream feels, well, a little rocky road, you're not alone. Millions of women have felt their libido melting away because of a medical condition known as hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or HSDD. But unlike brain freeze, HSDD can be treated. Maybe it's time to change the flavor of the day from not in the mood to libido renewed. So whether you're into plain vanilla or the queen of whipped cream down to cone, or deciding between between big or little spoon, it's time to scream for ice cream again. Visit screamforicecreamagain.com to learn more. That's screamforicecreamagain.com. Okay, it's our tried and true sponsor, Third Love. We love them so much, and all the time I get asked by my girlfriends, do you have a bra that you love to wear? What kind of bra are you wearing these days? And I tell them, Third Love, not only because it has the number one best-selling 24-7 classic t-shirt bra that I basically never take off, they have amazing things, and they have more than 80 sizes. So every Third Love bra is made with signature memory foam cups, no slip straps, and a scratch-free band from AA to to I, including half cups. They also have washable silk pajamas that are a dream. We love them so, so, so much over at Third Love. And they have a fit finder that helps you basically take a quiz, find out your perfect size and style. Can't go wrong with Third Love. They know that you deserve to feel comfortable and confident 24 seven. So right now they're offering our listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash lady gang now to find your perfect fitting bra. 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash lady gang for 20% off today. Now back to the lady gang. Look at these like pretty put together, <laughs> like all their, they got their mics on. They're all camera ready. They have all their professional gear. Like we've only done three episodes of our show, but just comparatively, I feel like we're the, the scrappy bastard cousins of the really well put together fairy tale stepsisters. 100%. That is the lady gang. <laughs> yes. We have a lot to learn. Is well, what Darren's trying to say. But well, Darren, you're always going to be like my scrappy, shittier sibling. Oh, no, that one thing I just said was a com- compliment to me, for sure. <laughs> that wasn't a put down. I was just setting the scale, just reminding yeah. everybody where, who, who, what, which cast we were in. Where you Ooh, stand. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Okay. He is the Emmy and Golden Globe winning actor, singer, songwriter, producer who plays seven instruments. And for some reason, one time during our podcast, we took a photo of him with no shirt on. And now I have it framed in my house. <laughs> He's a face face, a Grammy nominated third of the band Heim. 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 Wow. I knew I was going to fuck that up. I practiced all night. This is so embarrassing. And she wasn't there Tuesday night at the Olive Garden, you know. Together, they've launched a brand new podcast, That Thing I Do. And in honor of them, I'm going to sing their intro. Please welcome to the Lady Gang, Darren and SD. Hey. Good one. Um, how did the podcast come together? Um, I bullied Darren Chris into being yeah. on a podcast with me. Mm. Yep, that's oh, yeah. that's that, that's bully. correct. I'm a full blown yep. bully. I we we've had this, you know, Darren and I have this long standing, I think, love not only for each other but for this uh, this movie called That Thing You Do. Oh, good. <sighs> and um, I think we quote it to each other almost every time we talk. And. I would always say, you know, I could probably do that thing you do as a one woman show. I, and to, I could, which, to which I said, you should call it SD Himes, that thing I do. And I would see it in like a black box on, you know, in North Hollywood. Yeah. SD Himes, that thing I do. And it's just a one woman show of her in a, you know, on a 40 person theater, just yeah. doing the whole thing as herself. <laughs> and I was like, you let me know when you want to produce that. And that's just a joke that has always tickled me. Mm. Um, but be, ca- be careful what you joke about. Because then yeah, she yeah. was like, I love that as a thing. We should like do a podcast called That Thing I Do. Because during the course of the quarantine, we would FaceTime like every couple of weeks just updating each other on what the f*** was going on. And uh, she was like, we should, re- we should record this. That conversation we just had was a podcast. And I was uh-huh. like, we can't. Like, I, I can't be another Hollywood, like, <laughs> schmo 
coming in being like, wow. check out my podcast. What am I, the lady gang? Like, I can only do <laughs> so many things with my time. Actually, Part- I'm being I'm being cheeky, but you you know you guys are smashing in the game. You've done so well. I've literally watched from the front seat the lady gang explode and do super well. And so once I see that, I'm like, Ugh, I can't, I can't compete with that. Too like, intimidating. Just a saturated, it's it is intimidating. Thank you for taking the words out of my mouth. So it's a saturated <laughs> market. But SD being the charm, the snake charmer she is. Hmm. Uh, slash. I walked him uh, down. Yeah, the pragmatist, the pragmatist in me went like, what the f- else? Mm-hmm. Am I doing right now? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, but come on, no, we've got I, enough time. Also, I would be. Let's. I'll be real. I'm being. I'm being jokey as I do with with all the women on this podcast. But I am. Uh, you know, I would be so lucky, especially you know, Essie's rock star. And, I mean, uh, yeah, we have literally. We have so many sides that complement each other in our professional and uh, creative lives. That uh, you know, I said no simply because I didn't think I'd have the like the fortitude to keep it up because of all these random other things that I'm trying to keep going. But, um, dude, SD makes – I have more to gain from this than SD does. So, Well, that's yeah. not, honestly what I thought. When I saw <laughs> the EW thing, I was like, yes. wow, way to jump on the fucking cool bandwagon. Uh, grab Darren. those, grab yeah. those coattails. She was the one with – Relevant. The, she was the brilliant one with the idea of that amazing photo shoot. So she's, like, coming so up with all these the really good shoot. ideas. The yeah. photo shoot is amazing. No, this you guys. this woman see. shows up to the Brit Awards wearing the row, and then in the photo, it's like, thanks, the row. The f***ing Olsons don't lend people clothes. Like, you have to be next to when you're high. You when you get to I'm, wear the row on a red carpet, I'm sorry. I'm going to simply just sit here and take it because <laughs> I will wear that 100%. I felt like... I truly did feel like the bell of the ball, but I, I don't know if you, did you guys see the one? I, I don't even know if I would call it a snafu on my part. Um, I did not, I was wearing for those that didn't see the photo, I'm wearing like a very low cut, mm. uh, a blazer tucked into pants. It's not, it's not a, a onesie. Mm. That was a blazer tucked into pants. Mm with nothing under said blazer mm-hmm. and chose not to wear tape to mm-hmm. tape down. The, Ooh, I love uh, that though. Mm. How'd that go? I was like, fine, whatever. Rock and but, roll. Right. You, caution to the wind. But because of that, my breasts made many, my nipples actually specifically not, not cleavage. Mm-hmm. My nipples made uh, national news in Thank the God. UK. Did you wow. have a nip slip and did it get photographed? Like 20. Oh, amazing. <laughs> like during a live <laughs> telecast. Yes. Well, news day. I love this yeah. for you. No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> I, no, and if anything, like- and I, I tweeted, I, I tweeted this. I basically, uh, there's one ex in particular that I know was watching the Brits. Mm-hmm. And I know he saw my nips and he was, <laughs> and he missed them. And he missed them. Because <laughs> they're great. That is the one thing I will say about uh, my body. I love my breasts. That's so nice. Wait, then your, let your them hang out. I love it. Specifically, or your nipples or nipple. specifically? Both. Both. That's I think good. I have That's nice. really great nipples, and I have great breasts. Thanks, yeah. mom. See, I That's... have terrible breasts, but I have a beautiful nipple. The nipple hair is <laughs> oh. questionable, which we know. But I we do have to pluck agree. I've there. seen many nipples. I was even in a topless show, so I've seen like all the nipples that of like the rainbow of nipples of the world. And I think I have some of the prettiest nipples I've ever seen. Now they're hairy as fuck, so you gotta like weed through the garden to get to them. <laughs> but once you get to the garden, she's beautiful. She's it's worth it. You you have to earn those nips. Mm-hmm. I would love for you to maybe peruse the photos online and tell me what you think. Oh, I'm looking second, at them please. right now. Okay, let's, we're going to okay. Google. Um, I think it is chic as, f- however, I am unfortunately not seeing a nip slip in any of the photos I'm looking at. They probably Guys, what do I Google? ST Hyam. Just S- look up Hyam Brit Awards. Oh, no, I see it. Oh, wow. See what I mean? Show us. It's really Guys, nice. The, j- well, the this joys is... of Zoom podcasts is you have the <laughs> I mean, right Oh, my God. It. That's a They're nice great. nipple. It actually That's looks like a nipple that really thrills you when when you're in a sexual intercourse and it starts to get hard. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. like that is what we're going to well, That's literally that what you, you it should be. It, you have a great boob. It should be Thank like a, under the de- diff. Wow. Dictionary definition of nipple. Like it's just like a perfect. 
Thank you. It's a nipple. It looks like a Renaissance painting. It's a Renaissance of like what someone would have painted the perfect nipple as. I'm telling you, that is the that is that true. Like I will I will take that compliment because I Mm -hmm. I believe it as well. Congratulations. So I know congratulations boyfriend that I'm pretty sure was watching the Bird Awards. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Look what you're missing. This is the thing I was going to say is that when I listen to your new podcast, that thing I do available wherever you get podcasts, um, within the first four and a half minutes, you were talking about your virginity. And I was like, you know what? This is going to work because this (laughs) is the attitude you have to have with podcasting is that you can't come on your cool Hollywood podcast and and still be cool. You know what I mean? You got to come and share your shit and be relatable. And the fact that like episode one, Mm -hmm. she was like, I was a late virgin. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, you guys are kind of the perfect duo because no matter the media training that Darren Chris has received, (laughs) he's like (laughs) impenetrable for being appropriate. So it's like, it is absolutely perfection. What you guys have going on. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Becca. <laughs> I mean, we, we, yeah, we, I mean, again, like that was part of the reason why I wanted to do this podcast is because every time Darren and I would talk, even before having the idea of doing a podcast, I was like, I wish someone was recording this. Yeah. 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 You know, well, the, just we, for like we, posterity's what, sake, you know, but mm. for con- concurrently we'd be like, God, we should record of that. And then we'd be like, no, there's about maybe 50% of that that would probably get us. <laughs> you can't make you know it. That's why place. you edit afterwards. You just you edit out all the really edit. inappropriate shit. You say always edit. Always yep. edit. But um, yeah, like Becca I said, it is I, a nice balance. I, I, it is I would a nice agree. Balance. And I'm having a great time doing it. And Darren is a, a treasure and a pleasure to not only be friends uh-huh. with, but mm. to do this with and be my partner in crime. Mm. What is the thing that you guys cannot wait for the universe to find out about the other person? Like, is there just something Mm. that people just don't know about Darren or Esty? I mean, I think we're both learning a lot about each other via this because our our conversations are always uh, when we're we're catching up. It's always about what's going on in the world or what's going on in our like creative lives. Mm -hmm. Because of this podcast, we get in the weeds with personal stuff that Mm -hmm we're still learning about each other. And I'm sure that happens for you guys, despite how much time you spend with each other. It's just like, I mean, I... every now and then a topic comes up and you go, what how the f- did I not know that? Right. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, we're still, we're, we're, we're babies guys. We're still, we're still in our infancy as far as, you know, getting this podcast on the road. So I yeah. don't know. I feel yeah. like I think of it after this podcast. I don't know. What would you guys say? I, 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 I think about. every time I, every time um, Darren and I, have done this and even prior Darren would be in like pretty much in the position that he's in right now in his studio. And I'll just say like, I'll, I'll randomly drop like a lyric. Cause that's how I talk. And he'll know the song and know how to play it on guitar. Like oh, insane. I hate that. Like immediately, like does it like Too the roll decks of music that Darren has in his brain is astounding. It's so I don't annoying. have the, I don't have the ability to do that. It takes me like, I need a little bit of time to figure out the chords. And, mm. you know, I I need to do a little bit of mental gymnastics. It is something that is so ingrained in Darren. And I've always been impressed by that. I'm not sure the audience at large knows that. Well, Would you consider uh, if- Darren... Sorry, Darren, we're, I'm going to no, give please. you a compliment so you want to hear okay, this. Okay, please, go for it. Hit me. I've always considered Darren a bit of a savant with music. Yes. Yeah. 100%. It's okay. scary. It's really well, scary. if either of you know, like, a job where any of those <laughs> skills would be useful or lucrative, um, Darren, you're like, already please a musician. let me know. I know. I know. <laughs> Podcasting, a dueling like, piano is bar. The only place. That's a true. Piano I know. I was gonna bar. say that is mm-hmm. kind of the only place where knowing a song off the top mm-hmm. of your head and knowing the rest of it is somewhat useful. Because other than mm-hmm. that, it's kind of a party trick with my friends. Uh, and everybody mm-hmm. loves a dueling piano bar. Like you'd get constant we, praise. I, I think you love it. So I, um, we're all we're all Angelinos, correct? Yes. Not anymore. Well, not anymore. Okay. Becca's in Austin. But like we've spent a lot of time in Los Angeles collecting. Yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yes. Okay. So a little bit of SD Heim history. I used to work at City Walk. Oh, uh, there's a cinema. Uh, there. This That's is something why I didn't I know. know. That. 
There's a Cinnabon there. <laughs> but more importantly, there is a Howl at the Moon there. Oh. Right. The dueling piano yes. bar. Yes. So I Did you play the-, the piano? Okay, so this is what this is the this is what happened. So I used to work at the Daily Grill. I was a hostess at the Daily Grill for like three years. Hmm. Um, met some really, really amazing fun people. No one ever came in. And when they <laughs> did, it was it was a miracle. And we would celebrate them and dote on them. Truly great service. Um, and then at the end of the night, a lot of the people that I worked with would go up for a drink at Howl at the Moon because they knew all the bartenders and they would give us free drinks and stuff. And I was, I had like just turned 21 when I started working there. So of course, I think all of my, uh, my coworkers were like, we're going to, we're going to give Essie her first white Russian, which I'd never had before. <laughs> no, don't drink that. It's milk. It's that milk. will make oh, you. Oh, we're talking about drinks or we're talking poops. about like dudes. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so we go to this bar, <laughs> we go to this bar, truly, I, I get my first white Russian. And I think I said out loud, like, this is mother's milk. <laughs> <laughs> Not to bring it back to like nipples and to breast, but truly this is mother's milk. And I think I had like seven or eight of them. No. Oh my God. Scary. Like, horrible idea. How was your stomach? Aren't you, you, uh, 21. you can't drink milk like that. <laughs> um, the lactose intolerance that runs within the Heim family is astounding. Um, so, um, so yes, but that. That didn't that didn't come about until like the next day when I was like nursing mm. my wounds. But before that, when I was at Hell at the Moon, I was so drunk that I there were you know two people at the at the piano, but there's also a drum set. Oh, so right. I go on stage and start playing drums and singing backup for the dueling piano people. Mm-hmm. And I think they're used to people doing that and then ushering them off stage. But because I was so f***ing good at it, mm-hmm. even yes. David, <laughs> they let me stay the whole time. Oh, my God. Amazing. So I was, I'm playing A drums. Star was born. Billy Joel songs. I'm playing like maracas. I'm doing like a percussion, if you will. And I'm playing a full set. And then by the end of the night, the guys came up to me and they were like, if you want to work here, we'll hire you. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Wait, were so, you like playing hooky from the Daily Grill to go? No, it was over after. The- no, it was exactly. after. Okay, hours cool. Because the For Daily Grill, Daily Grill closed at like call it like nine or ten, mm-hmm. and then Hell at the Moon was open until two. Mm. How so really did I go after? Anyway, long story short, I didn't. I didn't have the confidence to truly mm-hmm. do that as like a job job. So mm-hmm. I would just come in and jam with them. Mm. Oh, that's even better though. Me. I'm looking up security video SD Heim How the Moon 2008. <laughs> City Walk. Uh, so really, you were discovered at City yes, Walk. I yes, City Walk. That's City that's Walk the dream, forever. right? That's why people go to City Walk. It's why I go. I, mean, yeah. I think that's why. City it's amazing. Walk. Yeah, yeah. City go on Walk. to City Walk. Get discovered. Gonna be a star. It's true. I mean, I I used to. Um, you know, there would be like ba- I would I mean I was so that girl there would be like people playing on at City Walk and I would go up and I mean I yeah. would really just I would come sing with them I would ask if I can play bass with them but you know it what was- it worked it worked this is, this um, is putting me in a really difficult position guys because I it just I, happened so I easily like- for Darren they plucked him <laughs> out of nowhere and they were like, oh, <laughs> play nine oh. instruments fine here's a TV show now here's a mini series now here's another mini series. Yeah, and here's a bunch of three unappreciative blondes. Um, Somebody's no, got to bring true. you back down, Darren. Yeah. You know? it, that's no. our job. I'm conflicted here, guys, because while I like the story about Howl at the Moon, we are talking about a direct competitor to Tramp Stamp Grannies, oh, which cool. is the oh. only piano bar that should matter in Los Angeles. Totally and different think, place. Howl at the Moon still around? It is. It's it's a uh, well. So Howl at the Moon is a dueling piano bar, which is two pianos playing, and then they have mm-hmm. drums, and they got like a band yeah, yeah. and everything. Right. Whereas Tramp Stamp Grannies is more of like a New York City mm-hmm. piano bar. It's, there's just a piano and show right. tunes and a bunch of drunk people. Well, uh, I think ours is way more sexy. I just want to say that when the lady I, band comes through and they have before, listen. they know that it's fun. SD High uh, hasn't been yet, but hopefully we open agree. soon. Yes, Chance I'm only going forever. I'm only going if I can be. Uh, the fourth time sister and sing some kind of a fun Disney medley. Oh, Great. You I just can't wait to be here. Are we negotiating terms for? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, and well, I got, yes, we are. 
while yeah, we're okay, negotiating, we should do yeah, business. get your boyfriend. Let's do some business. Let's right? do business. Can we do he, he can the write up the deals. The okay. reason <laughs> I didn't bring up tramp stamp grannies, it's actually on my show sheet here, is because we sort of have some awkward business between us, Darren, because I put a large sum deposit down to my have my 40th husband's 40th birthday oh my God. at grammys and then COVID hit and you still we have that deposit that so means there is gonna, a party to we're be gonna had open. oh shit i'm gonna, and I'm gonna, I have I'm gonna deposit so 41 I'm gonna tell you is solid. Gonna be awesome i'm gonna It'll tell you you know we're just gonna keep that deposit because as soon as we actually make good on this business transaction yeah you'll be 40 so maybe oh, oh shit. you think it's gonna be for maybe, my 40th birthday you f- maybe her. maybe you maybe you don't want to be 40 forever and we'll just uh, keep that deposit rude. and as long as we don't have your oh, birthday party both people win never be 40 can we yes. only can we only sing you be 40 songs at the <laughs> amazing so covers. that was good wow. that's the thing that i like to say about our podcast when people ask me when you just said what's the thing you want people to know sd heim is a perfect mm-hmm. tie-in uh Esty is a obviously a, a showwoman through and through and through, uh, like a, a true cad, vaudevillian, borscht belt, you know, like one liner queen. Oh. And uh, one of the, <laughs> you know, of the many appealing things of the Heim sisters, aside from being incredible musicians, rock stars, good songwriters, easy Hot. on the eyes, all the good things, Love to just eat, amazing. Drink. They have all the things. She is such a f-ing funny son of a bitch. And I, uh, <laughs> love that um you know one of the main bylines of our podcast is i'm i'm probably primarily known as a i'm a musician who's probably primarily known as an actor whereas uh esty is an actress like a comedian primarily mm-hmm. known as a musician and we kind mm-hmm. of meet right in the middle and esty has this really kind of rich history of studying theater and doing a lot of theater in school and went to school for all that stuff and then kind of somewhere along the way, you know, the, the fates that be kind of pushed her into this amazing career that she's had as a musician, similar to how I was doing music, even though I was doing acting too, the acting thing kind of caught wind. And then I just kind of went with mm-hmm. that sale. But um, yeah, I think her being such a a fun personality and actress, and I think the word is comedian, like in the true sense of that word, if you look it up, it's, it's like not necessarily being a funny Darren. person, but like, you know, like you just, you have that it. That uh, I think this is a the podcast is a great venue for you to showcase. Oh, so thank you. Open- you. I have a face for radio. Clearly, <laughs> we all do. <laughs> it's a face for radio. <laughs> what is it? I have a face for radio. It's like a face for radio. Oh, and a voice for print. Oh, oh wow! I haven't print. heard that one yet. Mm, I love oh, that yeah. though. Mm, That's oh, yeah. amazing. I was gonna ask you this, Darren. This one's not for you, unfortunately. But SD, okay. I. My life goal is to be cool, and I know it's not going to happen because I want that. I want that goal. She wants so to do that just desperately. Like, just break it down for us, uncool people. Like, what the f- is life like when you're cool? Like, do you try to be cool? Are you just Doll. so effortless? Like, when you put on that weird kitten heel and it looks good on you and on me, it's like, oh my god, no one's going to have sex with her. Like, how do you do that? I am going to butt in here, even though I wasn't invited, <laughs> I, because our last episode, cool. one of the, the the pinnacles of me saying, wow, that's really cool. And I just listened back to it. I was like, that's not cool at all. You think it's cool, but it's not. SD is so cool that we were talking about her playing a festival in Reading and Leeds where people were throwing piss at the stage, literally but, like peeing in cups and throwing piss at the stage. And she was like, yeah, I probably got urine in my mouth, but you know what? Rock and roll. And I went, I was, <laughs> oh? and I was so swept up in her confidence. I was like, yeah, rock and roll. That's cool. And then listening to it back, I'm like, that's f-ing awful. That's not cool at all. So you catch that's diseases. So- Hey, that's terrible but i just no. uh, because she has so much swag i was like yeah, yeah totally God. rock and roll yeah that's cool yeah that's yeah. cool I'm like no yeah you guys i think I, i'm really i'm gonna put i'm gonna put the brakes on this conversation right now because there is we we will have a, a stud city hang and you will quickly realize there is not a cool bone in this bitch's body it's not it's 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 SD 2.0 when she's on stage. Yeah. She's mm. cool. I would like to think I'm just the better version of, of SD when I'm on stage and I'm playing. And it's the only, I mean, and I said it on, on our last episode, it's the only thing that brings me true joy is being on stage and playing. 
And I'm sure as dancers, it probably felt the same way. When you're dancing, Mm -hmm. you feel you're like in your, in your body. And you're like, I can literally, Mm -hmm. I can move mountains right now because I haven't had joy since 2009. Let's be true. Let's I, be feel really, I feel bad for you. Can you, you can like take a, you can like take a, a fun, like, well, dance. now I do I bad dance. Down the stuff. street from you. Yeah, no, it is. I just don't mm-hmm. promote. No, okay. we, she's we don't need any more. She's all set. Her. So <laughs> let, let's let it lie. Let's leave yeah, it yeah, yeah, no, no, Everything no. has a season, you know, <laughs> <laughs> do everything let her, it, let her, it live in the past where it belongs. Um, is, are you going to now bring Darren on tour as the fourth time sister? Mm-hmm. Darren, Darren, thank you, honestly, Becca, for mentioning I, the long I, con I, that I've been trying to instill into. You're STI. like, well, I do have Rock a new star. star. I know you're anything like me. This I know that's where your head's Dar- at. But this is what coming from Darren, Chris, who I had to bully to spend an hour a week with me. I don't mm-hmm. think has time for me or has time to come on tour with me and be on a bus with a bunch of, you know, hooligans. I like, would do it if I didn't yeah, think it was brutal. flattering myself because these girls on stage are so. Mm-hmm. electric yeah that you i would just be the fart in the corner oh, darren. <laughs> be like, Guys, can well darren can we go and wear their merch and sit in the front row when they play austin you guys yeah. austin i mean austin is 100 percent going hopefully going to happen as soon as it's as soon as yeah. everything opens up but we announced a show today or well it went on sale today we're playing the santa, santa barbara, barbara. yeah oh yeah, yeah. And, Life is beautiful. Who wants to go to Vegas? Or I do. DC. We can go to All Things Go Festival. It's us and Charlie XCX. And- yes. Fun. Yes. All of them. When we come back, we're playing a game called Do You Know Darren? Today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. So if you're feeling depressed or struggling with relationships or maybe having difficulty sleeping or just meeting your goals, BetterHelp offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. So BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And the best part is you can start communicating in under 48 hours. So this is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. And there's even a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas so it's really great you can really find the therapist that works for you and they might be across the country but they're going to be your best match so the service is available for clients worldwide and you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor so our podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10 percent off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash lady gang visit betterhelp.com slash lady gang and join over the 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced better help professional We're so thankful for Away Luggage that sponsors Lady Gang because they've been a longtime sponsor of this program even before podcasting was something cool. And Away is a lot like Lady Gang, modern, thoughtful, but they have created the perfect suitcase crafted with features that make travel even more seamless. And I know we are all itching to go and travel and get out there. And so Away's range of suitcases, bags, and accessories are helpful wherever you take your next trip. All of Away's suitcases are designed to last a lifetime. They have durable exteriors and they're super light so you can pack them full um, and not have a lot of trouble getting around the airport or wherever you're going. They have four 360 degree spinner wheels that guarantee the smoothest row. We love them. So start your 100 day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash lady gang. That's awaytravel.com slash lady gang. Go get your suitcase awaytravel.com slash lady gang. So one of my favorite things to do is scroll on Everlane. They have the best stuff to update whatever season you're in, your wardrobe. So they have stuff that's casual for lounging around, stuff to go out in, and they have amazing, amazing denim with so many options. They have breathable organic cotton trackwear that gives you an elevated take on tried and true basics. And you can just get a head start on your favorite season by layering some of their cozy sweaters. All of my things that I love and wear to the ground are Everlane because they're just great basics and they all have like that uniform clothing vibe. And it comes with a 365 day guarantee. They accept returns within 30 days of the ship date and Everlane partners with the best and most ethical factories in the world for a fit to feel good about. So we love them so much. Go to everlane.com slash lady gang and sign up for 10% off your first order plus free shipping and get easy returns with 30 days of the ship date. That's 10% off your first order when you go to everlane.com slash lady gang and sign up happy shopping
A huge thank you to public.com for being a sponsor on Lady Gang today. So, you know, we learned a lot of things in high school that we're never going to use, like the Pythagorean theorem. Never used it once. But you know what I really could have used some help in? Learning how to invest. But with public.com, you can invest with any amount of money and invest thousands of dollars stocks with just one dollar. So when you invest with public.com, you're never investing alone, which I love. I never feel like I have any support when I'm trying to invest on my own. They make it easy to collaborate and build your confidence as an investor. So you can connect with other users like friends, other members, or even notable investors. And then you can learn a few things and see how they're investing. And public.com does not sell your trades to third parties. So if you want to check out public.com, use code lady when you download the app and let public.com know you're coming from lady gang and you'll get up to $50 in free stocks to get started on growing your portfolio. Valid for us residents, 18 and older subject to account approval. See public.com slash disclosures, not investment advice. You're listening to The Lady Gang. Darren essentially has three ladies in his life here. And he has made us all feel like we're the special snowflake in his life. And now the three of us are here. So, Jack, take it away. Okay, so this game is called Do You Know Darren? Very creative name. So in the game, <laughs> we I will ask... Am I in this game? Do I get You're to know in me? it. You're so in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in okay. it. I'm the host. Okay. okay, so in this game, we will ask Darren a question. And each lady of his life will try to match what darren says who will know him best the emmy winning journalist who's been interviewing for interviewing him for decades his bleak host star that spends hours and hours on set with him or his podcast partner will she be in perfect harmony with his answers okay so all right ask darren a question darren's gonna write down his answer we're gonna write down what we think darren's gonna say we're trying to get a match okay. we're okay. trying to get in his head okay right. Look at how good okay games and stuff this is so impressive Okay, so the, per, the first question is, who would Darren say is the sexiest person in Hollywood? Wait, Think so hard. I, so you I answer have to who say, you think the sexiest person in Hollywood You're is. just being honest in this game. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. So I'm not trying to write somebody who you might think. No, 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 no. You're, you're just answer. answering okay. honestly to Find these questions. Perfect. Show it. So now no, we're just Darren's waiting on Darren. Darren has to show it. <laughs> Or is it I mean, funnier if we show ours, each of oh, ours? Yeah. Let's show yeah, ours and probably. then yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Go. Would you like I to see mine? John Stamos. Oh. Huh. My answer is Darren Chris. <laughs> I'd see, that's what I thought he would say. Um, Esty? Esty? I said Rita Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are all good answers. Uh, I actually thought about putting Stamos because... That would be something that you guys would say. I would say. Oh, but that's not the game. I hope you guys brought your spoons for this schmaltz. But uh, the answer is SD Hines. Oh, 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 wow. wow. Kiss I ass. Kiss oh, ass. Was I was going to do that. Kissing Can I tell 30. you? But this is the, but you, the reason I, because uh, Mia is a nice Greek woman, yeah. correct? Yes, she is. So I thought about other nice Greek women in Hollywood. And That's... Rita Wilson is Greek. Oh, I like that mm. angle. Mm-hmm. Wait, is, she, is she a Greco? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, she's Greek. I thought she's Greek. I had no That's a idea. great. That was a great. Yeah, that was good. Okay, what's I mean, next? Rita Wilson is, is pretty damn sexy. I thought she was Greek. I thought that was the whole reason she wanted to do. I was being a, I was ki- being a kiss ass. I was putting my, my lips <laughs> okay. on this. Mm-hmm. Next question. If Darren has a hundred dollars, what would he spend it on? Hard. All right. All right, Becca, go. I said food. Mm. Okay. I said signed Becca Tobin merchandise on eBay. <laughs> Ooh, way no, cheaper. That's, that's yeah. I was gonna say that's way too. You can get a lot for a hundred dollars. <laughs> I can get I can get a hundred signed Becca dolls. <laughs> you could get nudes for less. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, just Google them. I I Literally, did, just Google them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I said Phantom Planet merch. Oh, oh, wow. oh my God. I will say really by property of, of SD being the closest and because I didn't even think of that, mm-hmm. but the answer, that is the f-ing answer. SD mm-hmm. Heim is correct, but I did say a show, a uh, Broadway, a movie, Concerts. concert mm-hmm. of oh. any kind, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, but, but, you can't get anything but, from Esty knows me better than myself because yeah. that is more correct than... They had a show, like, uh, a, a quarantine show that they did, and they had different packages for people to, like, check in on their live show. 
and I paid like the most expensive package for like a meet and greet and a t-shirt and all this stuff. And I didn't like, and I put it, I didn't put it under my name. I think I put it on like, like poopy McFartins or something like that. I didn't even care about having the merch. I just like wanted to give them my money. You wanted, the, yeah, I literally the just did the same thing with Paula Abdul. She's having a big live stream this Sunday. I'm doing oh, it. See, that's, yeah, you get it. <laughs> that's that's what what I, read. I've met her in real life. Poor your artist. But I like the Fucking idea loser. that they, they slotted poopy McFartins in at like 830 on like a Thursday for a meet and greet. And like, well, I guess he's not going to show up. They were probably um, so terrified of who that would uh, end up being. <laughs> okay. I know I should have showed up. Damn it. Mm-hmm. But okay. I'm so excited. Right. Okay. Oh, hotel reservation name mm. yeah okay next question is what would darren say was the worst cover ever performed on glee Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that's too hard there's too many like versions of songs did i just accidentally say that they were all bad i don't think that, that was what, I meant at all. <laughs> what i meant was there's too many options to choose from if you had an opinion about well it. there were definitely times where we would get a script and be like hmm <laughs> they ran out of money on this episode <laughs> I Wait, think this one's. On. I need to find. I think one. Becca obviously has an unfair advantage here. Uh, yeah, Becca, should I go the one that's conventionally understood to be the answer, or should I go with my personal? Personal. Wait, first say what the one is, though. The, there is one that is conventionally understood as a huge oops. Which is what? Let's Holding see it if for Becca your gets Wait, Don't stop it. believing. Hold on, no, I, I think I, I think I'm going to write it down. Okay. I per me being the. And, you know, happy-go-lucky fart I am. I, I, I enjoyed it because I thought it was so absurd uh, because I was wrapped oh. up in the... But uh, it is Becca widely knows. understood um, that this okay. was... And I just... Just so Beck and I can say that we did this. I have two... I have two possibles I'm going to put down. Put both. I'm put thinking. both. Okay. okay. Okay, this is... Okay. Uh, um, Honestly, I'm guessing yeah. Holding Out for a Hero performed by Kitty Wild. <laughs> Off. That was one of my favorites. Uh, Thank you. Uh, SD, Becca, don't give your answer because we're going to do it the same thing. Does SD know, even know any songs? It's too, there's no way SD would have known every single, like it's, there's, there's too many. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she's don't not a Gleek. No, yeah, it's fine. Not I, you can skip this. You can skip this. I think I'm going to have to skip. I'm going to have to. Okay. Yeah. yeah no Becca? worries. Exactly. There's no way that SD would know that shit. Mm-mm. My, I think what it is is what does the fox say? What does the fox say? <laughs> oh my god! What? Wow. <laughs> you guys did that with puppets. Exactly. It was exactly. it was like an acid trip that wouldn't end. Ew, it was so I hate weird. That. It was like it was one of these fifteen minutes <laughs> of like fame for this song, and they, I don't know. They just decided to put it in the show with no. I had Context. fun because it was ridiculous, but we were we were so deep into the show. We were like fourth or fifth season, and we were just sort of like delirious from the absurdity of it that it was the, for me i you know the more absurd it is the funnier it is to me so i'm sure there were people who were like what the f- is this and i was like i know right um, <laughs> it's amazing they were pissed people were pissed yeah like what are we doing it's just like, so bizarre. bizarre one more one more question jack you pick the one you want okay um darren is in jail what crime did he commit man remember when you were so good in the versace show I really got scared of you. I was like, ooh, you were we friends and amazing in that show. I really believed you. I was like, this is Peach, method. Guys. Like, he's a psychopath. Mm. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Wow, my writing's so terrible. Okay, uh, are ready? Okay, I'm ready, one. Becca. Okay. okay, this I have to explain. I said plagiarism because oh, okay. Ouch. Okay. he has so one. many weird things he remembers like his brain is so weird and scary that it holds on to the music and lyrics and poems and mm. i feel like it would be very easy to have all that floating around in your head and not even mean to but rip something or someone off mm. i mean wow. that's what happens mm. when in writing in general right like it's right. unconscious thievery of like all the things that you've ever been influenced by but i don't so. think you can go to jail for that <laughs> I mean, not with that attitude. You probably can. <laughs> I put trespassing. I feel like Darren's always at the party, and he's always safe? where Wait, he's on. not supposed to be. Again, for your readers who don't know, Kelty writes like a three-year-old bird. Um, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise anybody. <laughs> oh my God, Kelty. Okay, Esty, okay. what is Chris okay. uh, Darren Chris going to jail for? I said stealing merch from the Phantom Planet merch booth. Oh my God, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That Again, SD is good. probably the closest to what wow. would have happened. Thie- but um, just in line with our joke, I actually said exploiting Becca Tobin's nudes 
for, for, oh, yeah. for money. For um, money. Do you I get money for those anymore? You can uh, get money. Don't worry. Yeah. I, I give. I. I. I'd upsell them just by Thank like a you. dollar or two. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do want us to answer one question, and Jack, I want you to answer this too. This was a final question. Uh, There's too much blind. about me. When do we? I want to do. I want to play an SD version after. When this you is, guys get this to know is each actually other about SD. This is SD. Oh, okay, good. Right. Okay, so Third Eye Blind's playing a show. Yes. Times playing a show. They're both yes. playing the same night. What show does Darren Chris go to? <laughs> I know what I would do. <laughs> I know what I would do because I've been to many Third Eye Blind shows. Yeah not great <laughs> um he's very uh inconsistent oh oh bummer so do you guys have i have one question do you guys don't have, have to any... answer that yeah yeah you can there, there's you an can, answer you can the fifth. i'm going to third i blind yeah because <laughs> you know you as, can go anytime you. if you, you could fly get anywhere. out of the heim show you would go see third eye blind well that was going to be my answer i would yeah i would hire one of the lady gang ladies to be me <laughs> to fill it in. would be becca <laughs> yeah you all have the hair for it so it really Great. doesn't yeah. matter you do yeah perfect um, wonderful and i would go to see third eye blind you mm-hmm. know speaking of third eye blind yeah. this all kind of got started because of and i know you some of you guys have been so SD has been a, a frequent guest at a lot of our yes. '90s parties that we throw, and SD has done a cut. What you've done, you did Shania once. You did yes. that uh, was once awesome. Stefani once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kelsey, you, you I guys, was there. You were there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. So, um, yeah, we I go back with these with these gals, SD. But oh, um, yeah. that they, was so uh, fun. I missed that. I miss it a we, lot. We would do it like once a year, and SD was always so so gracious to come and do it. And so this actually really got like the catalyzed in February of 2020 before the shutdown, like one of the last great parties of like only in last great parties of the year that we threw through this big nineties parties. We do me and my buddy, Ricky. And uh, we had a ton of people come up and SD was, I, th- I think you were shooting something like you couldn't make it. But the idea was if you get out in time, we're locked and loaded for you to come up and sing that thing, that thing you, do. You, you do because that Aww. thing you yes. do while a 60s song is a song from the nineties. Yeah. So we were going to play it and we were ready to go. And I remember asking her beforehand because I knew she wouldn't be able to rehearse it if we if she showed up being like, hey, do you do you know all the parts? And she was like, Darren, I know the entire yeah. movie like the back of my head. And that's kind of what instigated this whole thing. And then several months later, here we are. I mean, a year with and the pod. change with, with the a pod. podcast because of that 90s thing well listen the the kids have to get back to podcasting that thing i do is available wherever you get your podcast every single wednesday it's super freaking cute and they're brand new to the podcast game so if you're listening to lady gang right now and it's tuesday head on over to apple head on over to spotify hit subscribe new little pop-ups will come every wednesday let's give them all the lady gang love make them number one and all that good stuff and um also as is playing the Santa Barbara Bowl September 17th before they head out to some dates in Europe. So Hell go yeah. get to that because it's going to be fucking epic and we'll probably be uh, in the front row with our SD t-shirts on and yes. it's incredible. <laughs> so, and Becca might be filling in for SD if Third Eye Blind, if third eye blind has a blind. Blind. <laughs> That's what's up. We don't Wonderful. know. We don't we know, don't but know. we're so happy for you and thanks for making time for us, you guys. Thank you guys. Thanks, thanks for, for having us, guys. guys. Love you Thank guys. Thank you for your podcast, mommy. And we will. <laughs> See you next, See you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my God, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. So I bub to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social. At Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday. I am Lola Blanc. And I'm Megan Elizabeth. And we're the hosts of Trust Me, the podcast about cults, extreme belief, and the abuse of power. Now on Podcast One. We want to debunk the myth that people who join cults are uneducated because anyone can be manipulated by a narcissist. And we should know we both have been. Join us every week as we explore the world of extreme belief, talk to survivors and experts, and share our own experiences with cults and the abuse of power. Get new episodes of Trust Me every Wednesday on Podcast One and anywhere you get your podcasts.